What's up YouTube, it's Louis here, I hope you are all well. It looks like Elrond did exactly what we thought last week, which was a, a rejection of the 20 weekly EMA. I did warn you guys last week, even if we are bullish, this is an expected rejection. Even if we believe Elrond will go to $100 next, this has to be, even if you are bullish, an expected rejection point. Because when we're in an uptrend, we use the 20 EMA as support to buy off and the 55 to buy off in an uptrend here and here are your examples. But in a downtrend, we use those specific points as your sell points. So technically, as I explained last week, this is a signal really that you should lose this low. Go check out the videos from last week um, where I explained this if you haven't been tuning in already. If you have tuned in since then, amazing. You're kept up to date. You understand that even though we are expecting Elrond to eventually go up, this was a point where we were anticipating a rejection, specifically because the 20 weekly EMA is there. Now that is a signal we will lose the low, but let's find supports above uh, $37 where Elrond could find or catch a support on to continue up. So we do have technical targets to in and around the 55 at around $100. But I must say guys, as the weeks go by, this will drag down. And so my target will be dragging down as well. Although we have these specific targets, these will eventually get met. But the lower this drags, it means that the resistance, the next key resistance going forward, that might not allow us to get to the target so fast is this. So this is also going to be a target of mine going forward. And again, yes, as the weeks do go by, this moves. So right now the price is $98, as we just said. So if this week, you know, you saw a weekly close above 62, it means, and then we, we managed to hit the 55 in one week, that means that would be at $98. But if it takes a good few more weeks to hit that, you can see it's gonna be dragging down below 90, below 80. So we want this to happen sort of fast to go up as high as we can before running into that next key resistance. We're doing so at the moment. So first, let's not lose $45. Why am I saying 45? Before I went on holiday in um, the end of September, uh, beginning of October, I left you guys off with this $45 support as we were coming, uh, where were we? Oh no, no, <laughs> my earlier holiday in August, sorry guys. Uh, in August, we had this $45 support, just like with all the other alts, we've been focused on that higher low, and that higher low is for Elrond at $45. So going forward, if we lose this higher low, we know we don't have this potential uptrend. If we continue to hold this higher low, we have this potential uptrend, we just need to see the higher high. Now we've got the higher low, we need to see the continuation, which is a higher high. If we lose the higher low, that's not an uptrend because an uptrend by definition is higher highs and higher lows. So if we don't have a higher low and we have a lower low, so if we manage to go below this point, then yeah, this upside would not have happened. This breakout out of a bearish pattern to the upside would not have happened. So really and truly, we should have gone down to around $20 out of this descending triangle. We also had a head and shoulders pattern. Shoulder, a head over here, and a right shoulder, I'll just draw it for you. Shoulder, head, shoulder. It's so ugly, you're gonna just have to train your eye if you want to be taught how to exactly spot them. I do this all in a video course that is currently 50% off at the moment if you just private message me over my Twitter. If you need further help, one-to-one -one help, I do offer a minimum of 10 hours of my time where I take out, yeah, 10 hours of my time over a month, uh, two months to teach you once you've completed the course. So yeah, get to me, get, get at me over on my Twitter, Louis underscore crypto, where you can private message me there and get this offer on either the course or just simply, yeah, I want to do the mentorship. I will also be doing a giveaway for a free course over there because we managed to hit 4,000 subscribers. I want to thank you guys for helping me achieve this because the last year we were only at 200 subscribers and it definitely didn't feel possible to get to where I am a year later. So yeah, I want to thank you guys for the bottom of my heart. Now, if we're getting back into Elrond and looking at these targets out of the head and shoulders, if you were to have ever lost that $45 higher low, you would have had a first target at 30 with a remaining target at 20 out of the larger descending triangle over here. But as we broke to the upside, we validated a bullish pattern, an inverse head and shoulders. We were calling this on other alts on the channel 
and uh, some alts had already uh, flown way beyond the inverse head and shoulders. Some alts up here in comparison to the head and shoulders, for example, and they're just coming down to certain EMAs to continue their journey. That's what we're waiting for. So the, essentially the same thing is expected for Elrond as long as Bitcoin can stay bullish. And we know if you've been following the Bitcoin updates, I do urge you all to follow them, that as long as Bitcoin's above that high, lower 18.6K, then Elrond is bullish. All your alts are bullish. And we've seen a bullish cross in the last days for Bitcoin. And that's why we saw this uh, continuation as we expected. And yes, we did get that close above $60 on the daily time frame, which is what we were waiting for. It's just we did understand that on the weekly. And I was saying that before you get this weekly close, even if you are above it, you need to react before the close. So of course, on Sunday, we were up there. But before Sunday had ended, it needs to show you it can't just it can't just simply ignore what this is a key resistance and just close above it like it's butter. We the weekly time frame needs to tell you that this is a resistance. And so before the weekly close, it could be green until one hour before the weekly close. Just in time for the weekly close, it's going to show you rejection. Go check this out on the daily time frame. You're going to see halfway through the day, you might be piercing above a certain EMA or a certain support or resistance. But if if it's not anywhere near the daily close, wait until the daily close and you might see a rejection. So that you can be taken to the weekly time frame, to the monthly, whatever the time frame, take that into consideration. Okay, before the close, it needs to show you that this is a key resistance or this is a key support. And so the same thing with down here. I was down here, but before the weekly close, I need to show you that there's something here stopping me from going down. Boom, we pushed you up. And now it's showing you that. But it could be that the whole week you were down here, but just in time for Sunday night, before midnight, it managed to come back up to show you this is a support, essentially. So same with up here. Yes, we've rejected it, but we need to find support above $45. Let's see if we can get a clearer picture on this time frame, on the daily time frame. What I can say, the move to the upside is done in the short term. So of course, if we ever reclaim this gold box, amazing, we know we are going up. In the meantime, I spoke about it last week. We don't want to be closing below the, the, the EMAs. We need to be following up. But also, let's not lose this wick over here, this higher low. You have a body there, which you actually rejected. So essentially, when you have a wick and a body close. So this is where I felt my first rejection. So this is where I'm getting pushed up by. This is where I'm feeling demand. And so I'm feeling that demand until then. So this demand stops there. So anywhere between here and there, there's demand. <laughs> Do you get it? And then we've come into that area. And so that's why we're going up. So going forward, you need to hold this area of demand because it's a higher low keeping you in this uptrend. Because since here, you have your high and your higher low or your high and your low. And then after that, you have your higher high and still at the moment, a higher low because this low is higher than that. And this high is higher than that one. So everything is following amazing at the moment. The moment you close below this, we're back to heading towards 45. We don't want that whatsoever. But please do remember, that's what the weekly time frame is trying to tell you, that this is a key resistance. And every time we reject this resistance, we eventually go lower than the low. So we got above it, but then rejected it. Look, you hit it there, exact same candle, it's right there. You got one here, although it's green and a little bit larger body. That is the same candle as that one. It's the same candle as that one. And it's happening all in the same locations. Even here, you have the exact same candle below the 20. That is your signal. We're going lower. That is your signal. We're going lower. That is your signal here. We're going lower. So here, that is your signal. We should be going lower. But what if it just doesn't work out? Because here, at one point, the 20 EMA decided... I don't want to hold a support anymore. Although the whole way up, we were bouncing off it, continuing up. At this point, it decided, no, I don't want to do that anymore. So when will that case be with this downtrend? Could this be the point with that, although it should be losing this 20, uh, $37 low, it does not. And we actually break above the 20 EMA, validating these targets all the way up until this 55 EMA, which at the moment is around $100. Again, as the weeks go by, this will change. The longer we faff around here, this comes down, could become 90, 
$85, $80 this resistance. Wherever that will be, that is your next resistance point. But please do understand the moment we're closing a weekly candle above the 20, that's a go signal to go to the 55 minimum. So that's an amazing 50% trade, let's say. Once you are above this 55 EMA, the next trade is to this key resistance, 100 to 140% higher. You could just simply wait for the all time high. But I'm telling you, these are the key resistances along the way. These are where you can expect dips at this one, at this one, and at this one. These are your highs that we're getting pulled towards like a magnet. The only thing stopping us, not allowing this at the moment, is this key resistance, which is telling us we should lose $37 down here. But we've set out levels on the chart that, that telling us as long as we're above these certain levels, technically Elrond is bullish. And that is this small gold box here, as well as this green box below at 45 to $50 and 50 yeah, to $53. These are your demand zones. Again, we are in a target. We are on our way to $100 as we broke out of the inverse head and shoulders here. We're just simply waiting for that 20 weekly EMA to be broken. And once we're above this red line over here, you'd simply uh, validate this double bottom. That double bottom and the reclaim of the 20 weekly EMA is what's going to send you to this 55 weekly EMA with over a 50% move from the breakout. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe and comment. Let's get to over 100 likes. Comment for the algorithm, share it as you will but also take action on the course. It's 50% off at the moment. If you want to be taught how to master these charts by yourself, so you don't have to have to rely on anyone like me. <laughs> I've, all, I've, all, I've put in all the hard work over the last year to create that course. So yeah, just take action when you're ready. Head over to my Twitter, Louis underscore crypto. Thank you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, peace.